Hello everyone. Today I'm sprouting broccoli seeds three ways. In the dark, in indirect light, and under a grow light. Why? Well, if you've watched YouTube videos on growing broccoli sprouts, you might have noticed a common theme when it comes to the first four days of sprouting. Many of the videos recommend putting the sprouting seeds in a dark place for the first four days, and then on the fifth day, the sprouts will look yellow, so you put them in the sunlight to green up, and then they're ready to eat. Here's a quick review of some of those videos. In a dark, dry place. I will just put them in the pantry where it's dark. Put it in a dark place. I'm putting it in my cabinet. If your kitchen receives a lot of light, use a paper bag to keep the seeds in dark. Some people also say to shove the jars into a dark cabinet. And then put it into a dark spot. I just pop it into a cupboard in a dark place. Cool and dark place. And then you're gonna store this away sort of like in the dark for um, a few days. I keep them in the pantry. I believe you're supposed to keep them kind of dark until like the fourth day. I took this out because these leaves were yellow. I wanted it to green up. I took it out. I set it out here on the counter. Once it greens up, it's ready. It's done. Eat it. So to see if this is true for broccoli sprouts, I set up a three-way experiment. I'm going to sprout broccoli seeds in a dark place, in a place that receives indirect light, and under a grow light. Let's see what happens. Before I continue, I couldn't help binge watching YouTube videos about the benefits of eating broccoli sprouts. So before I get to sprouting the broccoli seeds, I'd like to share with you a remix of YouTube videos from the Broccoli Sprout Gurus. You're here, then you probably already know the amazing benefits of sulforaphane. Broccoli sprout chemical called sulforaphane is one of the most potent antioxidants on the planet. Sulforaphane. Sulforaphane. Super healthy. Broccoli sprouts. Sulforaphane. Today I'm going to talk to you about a potential way to increase the bioavailability of sulforaphane. Glucoraphanate and myrosinase and produces something called sulforaphane. This effect is mediated via the NRF2 pathway. Sulforaphane. 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 And sulforaphane, when it's absorbed into the body, has this amazing reaction. Basically, it's a phytochemical that is found in a lot of cruciferous vegetables. Sulforaphane. 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 When the enzyme myosinase transforms glucophane and glucosinate into sulforaphane. <sighs> okay, let's get started. I have three mason jars set up here for the three experimental conditions. One will be in complete dark, one in indirect light, and one under a grow light. And, of course, I have broccoli seeds. These are organic seeds from True Leaf Market. They sell seeds for microgreens and seeds for sprouting. The ones labeled for microgreens are significantly cheaper, and those are the ones I use, both for sprouts and for microgreens. I started this experiment on a Monday night. I measured out the same amount of seeds for each jar. Two tablespoons per quart jar is what is typically recommended. You can use less and that's fine. The sprouts will have more room to expand. Just don't use more or the sprouts will get very crowded in the jar. After I measured out two tablespoons of seeds into each of the mason jars, I covered the seeds with some filtered water and then screwed on a stainless steel straining lid specially made for sprouting. I got these lids from Amazon. They fit wide mouth mason jars and makes the process of rinsing seeds much easier than cheesecloth, which is what some people use. Now we let these seeds soak a bit. I let them soak overnight. There are differing opinions on how long to soak the seeds. Of course there are, but this is an experiment about lighting conditions, not how long to soak the seeds. It's now Tuesday morning, so let's call this day one and these seeds have been soaking overnight on my kitchen table. All three jars were in the dark since it was night, and they soaked for about eight hours or so, all three for the same amount of time. I drained out the water, and then I laid them on their side and rolled them around to get the seeds to coat themselves around the bottle as best as I could. This way they wouldn't all be clumped together. 
And then I set two of the mason jars upside down in the drip tray and covered the one on the left. So here I have two of the experimental mason jars. The one on the left will be kept in total darkness for the first four days and the one on the right will be kept in indirect or ambient room lighting. And now for the third jar. This one is going under a grow light, a nice bright LED light that came with this Greenjoy grow box. You can see I started a new batch of lettuce in there. So this mason jar is going to get plenty of direct light for 16 hours a day and no light for 8 hours at night. Good morning! Today is Wednesday, day 2, and let's see if there is a difference between the broccoli seeds. This one is being kept in total darkness, and this one in indirect or ambient light. And it looks like the seeds in both jars are starting to germinate. I don't see any difference between the two jars. Now let's take a look at the jar that has been sitting under the grow light. The seeds here look like they are also starting to sprout. I'm not sure if there's a little more sprouting going on in this jar than in the other two jars, but if there is, it's very slight. Okay, now it is the same day, Wednesday, but it's about 12 hours later in the day. I visit the seeds twice a day to give them a rinse and to check on their progress. These are sprouting a bit more, but I don't see much of a difference between the seeds in the jar on the right and the seeds in the jar on the left, which was covered to keep out the light. After giving the seeds a good rinse, I roll the seeds around in the jar to make sure they're spread out and not clumping together. Then I set them upside down to drain. The one on the left gets covered up again, and then the jar on the right gets a good rinse. The seeds get rolled around, and then it too gets to relax upside down in the ambient light of the kitchen. The seeds under the grow light get the same treatment, but before I do, I want to compare them with the seeds that have been sitting on my kitchen table. And the seeds from under the grow light do seem to have more sprouts growing with longer tails. I give those a good rinse as well. Here's a closer view of those tails. And then these sprouts go back under the grow lights at an angle to help drain out the excess water. Okay, today is Thursday. This is day three. And here are the two mason jars on my kitchen table. One kept in the dark, one not. And of course the one under the grow light. It looks like there are some green things happening in there. Back to the sprouts on the table. These are both yellow. They are growing fine. I don't see any difference between the two on the table. Let's get the one from under the grow light so we can compare the three jars side by side. The one on the right that's the one that's been under the grow light for 16 hours a day. It does look like the seeds are sprouting more quickly in there. As for the other two jars, the sprouts look yellow and they're not sprouting as quickly, which is fine. It's only day three. This jar has been kept in the dark and when you compare it with the one under the grow lights, there's an obvious difference in the color. All right, these are all going to get their twice daily rinsing and back to where they belong. Now it's Friday and it's day four and let's take a look at the two jars sitting on my kitchen table. And you can see now a difference between the sprouts that have been kept in the dark and the sprouts that are receiving some indirect light. Now let's get the jar that's under the grow light. And let's get that jar next to the other two so we can compare them. Moving from left to right, the jar on the left is yellower. That's the one that's been in total darkness for four days. Then the middle jar is maybe a little greener. And the one on the right, that's the one that's been sitting under the grow lights. That is definitely much greener. And the sprouts in here are already developing leaves. And those leaves are a dark green color. These sprouts, I'll call them sprouts even though they might be more correctly called microgreens at this stage. These sprouts are ready to eat. Here are the sprouts from the middle jar. These could also be eaten now, or we can wait another day or so for them to grow and green up some more. It's really your choice. And here are the sprouts that have been kept in the dark. They have the lightest color, of course, and they're not as fully developed as the other two jars. They could definitely use another day or two, or even three, to develop more and green up a bit. Okay, it's now Saturday night, day five, if we call Tuesday day one. Remember, I started these sprouts by soaking them on Monday night, and this is the jar that was kept in the dark for the first four days. 
and has been sitting in the ambient light for one day and you can see the sprouts have grown a bit and definitely greened up some. The jar on the right has been in ambient light for the entire five days and the sprouts in this jar really look very much the same as the sprouts in the jar that was kept in the dark. Now let's get the jar from under the grow light and this actually looks a bit past its prime. These were really ready to eat yesterday. You can see the leaves in this jar are way past what we would call sprouts. The leaves are much more developed and you can see they're a darker green than the sprouts that were left on the table. I really should unpack all these sprouts, but I'm tired, so it's going to have to wait till morning. Okay, it's Sunday morning, day six, and the sprouts really need to get out of their jars. Here you can see the sprouts that were kept in the dark for the first four days. And here are the sprouts that have been kept in ambient light for all six days. And finally, the sprouts that have been kept under grow lights. Okay, time to unpack these. I'll start with the sprouts that were kept in the dark. You can see they're really packed into the jar. And that's why I said two tablespoons is really the limit of how much you would use for a quart jar. And less would be fine too. Then the sprouts wouldn't be as packed in. As I rinse the sprouts, you can see the hulls of the seeds get loose and float to the top. I try to get rid of as many as the hulls as I can by straining them off the top and then rinsing again to shake loose as many as I can. I do the same for the second jar, rinsing and scooping out the hulls. Then I spread the sprouts out on paper towels to dry off before storing them in the refrigerator. And now for the last jar, the one that was under the grow lights, and you can see how green these sprouts are compared with the other two. And now I have the sprouts from all three jars spread out to dry. And let's have a taste. Tastes like broccoli sprouts, which is a good thing. Next, the sprouts from the jar that was kept in ambient light. And a taste. Tastes the same as the first. And now for the sprouts that were kept under the grow light. These are definitely past their prime. I would say about two days past their prime. But let me give them a taste as well. Okay, these have a little stronger of a taste and the two on the left have a milder taste. One more thing you might notice, these sprouts that were under the grow light don't have the same nice white root system as the other sprouts. They really should have been harvested two days ago when they were at their best. Let's have another look at the sprouts. The sprouts on the right are really not what I would consider sprouts anymore. They've grown bigger and darker leaves and really could be called microgreens if I want to play a game of semantics, but I don't. It actually isn't fair to compare the sprouts on the right from under the grow light on day six when they were clearly ready and in their prime on day four. So what did I learn from this experiment? First and foremost, it is not important to put broccoli sprouts in a dark place for the first four days of sprouting. Both the sprouts kept in the dark and the ones kept on the table in indirect light had the same taste, color, and texture in the end. What about the sprouts under the grow light? Well, that was interesting. They grew very quickly and they were ready to eat on day four. I didn't taste them until they had another two days of growing and by then they had a stronger taste, more like microgreens rather than sprouts, but still good to eat. Now, what about the nutritional value of these sprouts? I have no clue, but my intuition tells me that the darker the color, the more nutritional value it probably has. But who knows? I'll leave that to the experts. Okay, enough said. Time to eat and enjoy. Thanks for watching. Bye.